What's up, everybody? Welcome to Most Foul TV. I'm your host, Don T. Pena, and this is Most Foul Chief. We are back, or I am back. I know it's been a long time, guys. It's been, you know, since I think about the middle of last season. I haven't put out a video. You know, my computer kind of went to shit. It's been a little, uh, little tough. But I'm trying to get back on the horse and get some stuff out, especially with all the crazy shit that's been going on in the NFL. And obviously, like the title says, breaking news today. The topic, my phone was blowing up all goddamn morning. I woke up early because of it. Tyreek Hill, the fucking cheetah, the most dynamic, explosive, fastest player in the NFL, has been traded to the Miami goddamn Dolphins. All right. Now, so th this is obviously this is my reaction video. This is going to be, you know, we're going to talk about it. Everybody's releasing videos. It's been, you know, broke the internet earlier today. Um, you know, if there was ever a, a topic that I needed to come back on and just do a, a quick video, sorry for the shitty, uh, you know, camera and all that. Obviously, I'm at work, guys. This, this topic and this situation definitely called for me to, uh, you know, talk about it and, and give you my thoughts. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of my friends out there, uh, both friends and rivals, you know, of other teams, probably been waiting for this one, wanting to see this reaction. They, I mean, I reacted live when it was happening on Facebook uh, via message and, and text message and all that and, and uh, you know, posting, but I uh, didn't do a video, so here's the goddamn video for all you sons of bitches that are probably waiting for this one. Um, now, so let's get into it. I mean, obviously, it's huge. It's a huge blow. It's it's the last thing anybody expected. And it's fucking horseshit. Okay, I'm going to say it. If you want some balanced ass, uh, fucking the, the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, oh, you know, maybe this and that bullshit kind of fucking bullshit, go to somewhere else. Go watch NFL Network for that shit where the real the analysts actually probably want to say some shit, but they can't. Because they know it's all shit. But they got to be on TV, so they got to be nice. I don't have that fucking problem. Right? I can say what I want. So, I'm going to be the voice for every Chiefs fan that saw this fucking shit and thought one thing. This is some goddamn bullshit. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? This is the dumbest fucking move. It's going to be dumb five years down the fucking road. It's fucking stupid. Even if we win a Super Bowl, Tyree Hill is a generational player. One of the most, if not the most, explosive, dynamic, game-changing player possibly ever. Because name me one guy that can flip a field like he could and, and change a game. But, you know, we can debate that shit all day long. But he is one of those guys right now. Shut up. Obviously, I'm at work, so you're going to hear, you know, you'll probably hear that go off or maybe my stupid tablet will go off, whatever. So, like I said, I'm going to be the voice of Chiefs fans' anger for a bit. That's why I'm going to start this, this video with that, you know, with that, that fucking premise alone. It's fucking horseshit. It's stupid. It's, it was a dumb fucking move. I think Brett Beach, and I'll get to that in a second, I, I think he panicked, uh, and there is something he can do to make this less of a fuck-up or less of a, of a hit. Now, I get it. It's the NFL. These things happen, and this is a new NFL and we'll get into all of that as well, like, you know, but I am going to start this whole thing with the honest reaction of what Chiefs fans justifiably so have, this is fucking stupid, what the fuck, and that's exactly what it is, okay, you do not replace, no matter what we do, you do not replace a Tyreek Hill, you can't replace that kind of player, everything he does, and it's not just the top end speed, it's not, it's not just his speed, the amount of attention that he commands, just the distraction alone, even if he's a decoy, is insane. The guy runs three, four rounds before the ball's even snapped, back and forth. He'll run a, a, a you know, go in motion, run a reverse, run a double reverse, and then go out, and he's not even the goddamn target. You know, but he, he commands two players just to keep an eye on him, and he never slows down. You know, so we're definitely going to miss that. You don't replace that. You don't. And that's 
that's hard, that's harsh, that's fucked up. It, it's it's definitely a blow to our offense. It, it's, we're gonna have to. The whole offense is now redesigned, just based on that. Now, and I'll get. I'm gonna touch on all of this stuff. It's not all doom and gloom, but it is the initial reaction is this is fucking bullshit because it is. It's fucking stupid. With that said, I love Tyreek Hill. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the Super Bowl and six glorious great seasons. He's the fucking man. He's the cheetah. In my mind, the best wide receiver in the NFL. And now he plays for Miami. So congratulations, Miami. You guys are still going to suck, but you're just a little bit better. I'm glad he got paid. We'll get into all of that. So let's talk about why this happened. Okay? So... DK Metcalf signed, got traded to the Raiders. Or so not DK Metcalf. No, I'm going ahead, jumping ahead of myself. Uh, um, Devontae Adams, my bad. Devontae Adams got traded to the Raiders from the Packers, right? That was the first domino to fall. And then, um, because of that, he then he was the highest paid. You know, got 25. I think they reported 28 million, but that was kind of horseshit. I think it actually balances out to about $25 million on an average uh, a year, which made him the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Now, why did that matter to Tyreek Hill? Uh, well, how did that affect it when everybody was like, the deal's almost done with Tyreek Hill? Very simple. The, the Chiefs and Tyreek Hill were close to uh, signing an extension. Around $20 million dollars. Hill was happy with that. Chiefs were happy with that. They were willing to pay him up to $20 million a year. Then the Devontae Adams thing happened. All of a sudden, that pushes the number. Now, he wasn't trying to be the highest paid wide receiver at that time. He was good with $20 million. But when he saw that they were paying out $25 million to fucking Devontae Adams, who doesn't have a Super Bowl ring, at least I don't think he does. No, he doesn't. And, you know, isn't as accomplished. He's, you know, they've won and they've gone to... The, you know, the playoffs and the NFC championship and all that, but they haven't won. Hill has a ring. So he's looking at it like, well, wait a minute. I'm more accomplished than that guy. I have a championship ring. Can we get a little closer to that $25 million? The Chiefs weren't willing to do it or thought they couldn't do it. So they allowed the trade talks to happen. Uh, and or I think actually I think the Montes comes in at like 22 or 23 million something like that whatever uh, I don't have the exact number in front of me Miami comes in they offer five draft picks and they offer Tyreek Hill 25 million dollars a year if you're Tyreek Hill and this is the new NFL loyalty is great like if people are talking about Oh, you know, he's never going to be Jerry Rice or whatever, you know, legacy and all that. And that's probably true now for sure. He's definitely not going to be as uh, accomplished. He's not going to win as much in Miami. Um, it, it, you know, he's going to improve that team, but he's not going to be in the playoffs in the AFC Championship every year or the Super Bowl almost all the time the way he would be and have a more of a shot if he was in the Chiefs. But with that said... This time, the money in the NFL now is a lot different than it was during Jerry Rice's um, time. So to try to say, oh, you know, like Jerry Rice, all those players, you know, those old school players that stood with teams and all that, you know, they, that's why they're who they are. All bullshit. Because if, if Jerry Rice played in, in, and obviously he moved, um, you know, teams, but he moved way later in his career um, when he went to the Raiders and all that other shit. Um, but that was way later in his career, not in his prime. But if he, if they had the kind of money that the NFL has now, Rice would have done the same thing after four years. I mean, it, it's it's hard to turn down that kind of money. So, so there is that. It's a different NFL. Everybody does it, right? So I'm not necessarily mad at Tyreek Hill for that. I mean, could you make the argument? Oh, you know, take the hometown discount, all that. Yeah, but I mean, should he? Would you? You know, um, would the teams? You know, like, they, they, why, we have this weird idea that the team, that the players need to be loyal, but the teams never are. You know, they're willing to jump off of a player really quickly, too. So, it goes both ways. Um, now, 
I do believe Brett Veach fucking panicked because uh, Tom Palacero talked about it when the news broke and he had said that he didn't think it sounded right that given the way Mahomes' contract is structured, they could have structured a deal for Tyreek Hill to put him at around $20 million and then over the course of the next three, four years, kicks him up and his average salary would have equaled or at least gotten close to that $25 million number that he wanted and everything would have been cool. But they felt apparently that, you know, they needed to move on now because, you know, the season's game, the offseason's in full swing and they, if they're going to take a shot at some of these other players, they need to do it now. I think Veach padded. Unless he has a plan, which he definitely usually does. But still, I don't give a shit how good that plan is. I mean, it's Tyreek Hill, okay? So, how do we make this better, right? How do you know? And here, here's well, here's where I think uh, Veach can not necessarily hit a home run, but pretty goddamn close to it. I, I guess it'd be a home run. It, it would be. It would be a home run. It would be a grand slam if he does want like something around this idea. So we couldn't supposedly afford, or at least couldn't get to the number that Tyreek Hill got. At least the number that Miami gave him. Fine. Okay, it's unfortunate. Hill, go make your money. And here's what Beach does. Does. He gets five draft picks, two number ones, right? A number one this year, a number one next year. Um, a number two this year and a number four this year, right? And then a five and a six next year, plus their number one next year. It's a lot. I think something like that, or somewhere around there. I might have some of those the picks mixed up. It was five, right? Two first rounds, a second, and a f- yeah, and, and like a uh, fourth and a fifth or some shit like that. Whatever. The fuck it is. And um, so he gets the, the, all those picks, right? If he goes out and gets Odell Beckham Jr. to replace Tyreek Hills. Or not, not, as a, not to replace Tyreek Hill, because, again, you don't replace Tyreek Hill. But we need a legitimate number one. We do, okay? Because Juju Smith-Schuster's not a number one. And Nicole Hardman couldn't step up to be the number two role last year. So he's not ready for the number one spot. So we have two solid number twos, or a solid number two and a, a great uh, rotational, you know, player in McCole Hardman. We'll see what Darius Fountain has, but he's also not a number one. He showed great promise, but he's still a number, you know, second-year player. Really, he's going to be a first-year player because he got injured most of last season. So, uh, he's not ready. So, we need a legitimate number one. So, let's say he goes out and gets Odell Beckham Jr. Or, there's recent rumors, and if this happens, this will be even bigger than Odell Beckham, DK Metcalf. And I'm not as high on DK Metcalf as a lot of other people. He's a great weapon. He's a great threat, deep threat for sure. Um, he has issues. He's not as good as Hill, but he is a legitimate number one. If Hill is a 1A, he's more of a 1B, you know, or a high, high number two, you know, but he, he can be a number one. I think if he was a number one solely on a team to, and they were depending on just him, he wouldn't do well. In our offense, though, he could be the number one wide receiver, but he's not the number one target. And that would be okay. You know, because obviously Travis Kelsey is the number one target. He's still going to command most of the attention. DK Metcalf can take a top off of defense just like Hill can. He's a bigger body. Arguably has better hands than Tyreek Hill because Tyreek Hill dropped a lot of fucking passes last year. So... And, you know, so there's that. Um, so let's say that that, and that's the rumor right now going around that DK Metcalf and the Chiefs are in talks or whatever. That's the rumor, right? Maybe it comes true, maybe it doesn't. Let's say that happens. So, and and he signs them for less than what they were offering Hill at $20 million because DK Metcalf is not a $20 million player. I mean, maybe they could offer him the same or even a little bit less you know, 17, 18 million dollars a year because you don't have a ring. You've never been to the to the championship, uh, and I don't. I think he he's maybe been a one playoff game, if that, and they lost it. Um, you know, so again, you you're a good. You got a lot of potential, kid. Great, you know, coming out of your rookie year, but or your rookie's contract. 
but you're not as accomplished as Tyreek Hill, so you do not deserve Tyreek Hill money or a Tyreek Hill contract. So I wouldn't give him 20 million, but I would give him maybe 17, 18 million for a couple of years. Why not? And maybe he decides, you know what, 17, 18 million is good for my first contract extension, and I don't have a ring. You know, I'm not a proven players like champion yet, and I get to go play with Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Juju Smith-Schuster, McCole Hardman, you know, uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and that, and, and Andy Reid. That's a pretty good deal. So you get it for 18 million. You get uh, DK Metcalf, and you have two number one draft picks in this year's draft, and then again next year. And you go out and get, maybe you draft, uh, you know, for that that number 29 overall, you go get whatever top defensive player, maybe a corner, whoever the best corner is, maybe another edge rusher, maybe another safety, whatever. And then for that number 30, maybe you go get whatever wide receivers out there, because there's a lot. There's a lot of great wide receivers. I posted about uh, that Williams kid. Who he's gonna drop in the draft because he's really fast. Probably they said he was the fastest player, fastest wide receiver in college last year, but he got injured, so a lot of people uh, are dropping him in the draft. So maybe we get him at 30. And now we have another dynamic player who's a young rookie who's a lot cheaper. If those things happen, if that's how the kind of chips fall, it lessens the blow and the bleeding um, of the Tyree Kill loss. Make no mistake, it still sucks. We are losing a guy who was a staple in Kansas City. Homegrown talent. That's the other thing. We didn't trade for Tyreek Hill. Right? We fucking drafted him, groomed him. He grew up in our system. That's a Kansas City chief. And that's what makes it hard. Because he was homegrown. No one was looking at him. We were. And we took him. And he, and he became Tyreek fucking Hill. So, you know, but hey, congrats, he made his money. We need to move on and look forward. So, uh, again, if if that becomes the plan, then I, then it's a, it is a home run, and we're going now. The talk that oh, the Chiefs, that's it. They're not good. You know, they're, they're no longer the best. They're not going to compete. Now, if we do not replace the number one wide receiver spot, then you can make that argument. Because you need a number one wide receiver. You're not going to get it done with a bunch of number twos. If we, but if they do, and again, if they go out and get Odell Beckham or T.K. Metcalf or use it in the draft capital to go get one of the top wide receivers, like a top ten in the draft, then okay. But I don't, I don't even like that idea. I don't like taking a chance on one of these wide receivers early in the draft, you know, using our two first round picks 29 and 30 to get in the top 10 and go and get one of these guys because they're still rookies and I don't think they are they're great they're, I mean, there's a lot a lot of depth in wide receiver in the draft this year but I don't see any of those guys and there's no real reports that any one of these dudes are automatic day one starters Odell Beckham Jr. kind of guys DK Metcalf I don't even think he went in the first round you know um, you know it's the kind of burners like that like, like, like solid number ones Go to start for you day one kind of deal. Not at the top 10, not for that kind of high draft capital. Now at 30, at 29, sure. If we don't have to move and we get a, a, a quality guy like that Williams kid, fuck yeah, pull that trigger. So, you know, again, but going back to my point about, about not being the best or whatever, again, you still have Patrick fucking Mahomes, okay? I don't give a shit what the Chargers did or whatever and all that. They fail like they always do. Uh, down the stretch, uh, what it mattered, and they didn't even make the playoffs last year. As, as dynamic as Justin Herbert is, he didn't get it done when it counted. Okay, Mahomes does. Um, we fell short in the AFC Championship, but we went to the AFC Championship for the fourth fucking year in a row. Um, you know, so Mahomes is still there, Kelsey's still there, Andy Reid's still there, Clyde Edwards and still there. Hello, we have Juju Smith Schuster. He's no, he's not some fucking scrub. You know, he just was on a shitty team for the last couple of years. You know, Ben Roethlisberger doesn't have it anymore. Hadn't had it for the last two years. So, again, so that, now again, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the draft, what they do in free agency. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, so that's what it is. Again, then there's talk 
about Mahomes' contract and all that. That's a bunch of horseshit. Don't believe that horseshit either. Well, see, Mahomes took all this money. No, they can't. No. Sunhouse contract is structured. His contract is structured so they can do those kinds of numbers. That had nothing to do with it. What, what had everything to do with it was my was was uh, uh, Devontae Adams' contract blew negotiations out of the water and set the market, set a new number for the wide receiver market. And that changed everything. And once that happened, you know, Tyreek Hill was like, well, shit, if you're going to give him 25 million or, 20, you know, what, what about me? What can I, and let's get close to that. And, and Miami was the team that was willing to do it. So, and again, you got to, I mean, logically, you got to look at it from the Chiefs standpoint in Brett Beach. Like, well, shit, he's getting up there. He's, he's 28 or 29. You know, he's going to command a lot of money. Um, obviously, you know, unless he takes a team discount, which I don't really know why you would. You know, like, I mean, again, yeah, team loyalty and all that, but damn, you know, he got to take care of his family, and so I'm not mad at him for that. Um, you know, so you look at it like, look at all these young wide receivers coming out of, the, out, out of college right now. A lot of them are super fast, and so they might be looking at it like, you know what, let's pull them. And we still got McCole Hartman, who's fast. Um, you know, so let's see. I mean, let, it really is going to come down to what else the Chiefs do. If we go out and get Odell Beckham or DK Metcalf, you know, Jarvis Landry's still out there, but, or, you know, but I'm not, he's great, but to me, he was a, a good number two also. He's not a solid number one. All right, sorry about that, guys. But like I said, obviously, I'm at work. Uh, so I had to, had to uh, pause there for a second. Uh, like I was saying, Jarvis, you know, to me is not, isn't a solid number one. Like he's, again, he's a great number two in tandem with another great wide receiver. But as a, as the sole like guy that you're going to lean on, I mean, maybe. But I mean, he was impressive for a while in, in you know, with the Browns, but I wouldn't mind getting him as our solid number two. Like, I think that's what he is. Again, to me, it's DK Metcalf. As far as the agents, the free agents that are out there, it's DK Metcalf and, or the possibilities, and Odell Beckham are the, like, legit guys that, I mean, if they're going to go that route, that's what you target. And it, and it just kind of, it softens that blow. It's, it's not going to heal it. And again, you're not replacing Tyreek Hill, even with an Odell Beckham. Um, uh, Hill is way more accomplished. Um... But it would lessen the blow. Again, great, great route running, great hands. Uh, now, obviously, you know, with the Rams, you know, Odell is a champion as well. So he does have a ring. He does have that experience. That's great. You know, that's, that's a plus. So he knows what to expect. Um, that definitely helps, man, that experience. So, you know, if, if it comes to that and it's like Odell Beckham or DK plus all the draft picks we got, then it's kind of, a, you know, again, it's it's a little easier to accept. It still sucks because, like I said earlier, Tyreek Hill is a homegrown guy. You know, we drafted him in the third, what was it, the fourth round or whatever it was, third, fourth round, I don't remember, maybe even later. And and he became the cheetah. I mean, it was a great story. Um, but this is the new NFL, and money is insanely massive in, with these contracts now, so... You know, you can't blame players for moving. I mean, shit, shit LeBron with with the, you know, in basketball, hops to a team every couple of freaking years. So, I mean, shit, why not the NFL, right? So, now for for us, again, if, if, if we go that route, best case scenario to DK or, or Odell, um, there was talk about uh, AJ Brown, I think. Uh, one of the Brown wide receivers, I forget which one, Marquise Brown. There was talk about maybe him. That would be cool, too. Um, again, not as dangerous, but at least a solid number one. Again, and then you pair him with Juju and McCool and uh, Doris Fountain as the core of the wide receivers. And then, obviously, you still got the, the ultimate weapon with Travis Kelsey and you throw in the running backs with Clyde Edwards, Alaire, the Clydesdale. Um, I believe, uh, you know, would they re-sign Gore? And I don't know what they're doing about, uh, uh, what was the other guy, the, the, the guy that stepped up, uh, running back, uh, fucking forget his name, um, 
Y'all just say it in the comments. I'll remember later. Um, but, you know, he did a hell of a job, too. I don't know if he's coming back. Um, um, he's a veteran, the veteran player. I forget his name. Whatever. And, um, you know, so, if that, again, if that's the route, they go out, they get, they get a, a, another young rookie at 30. You know, go get a good defensive player, the top defensive player at 29. And then go get a wide receiver at 30, whatever best available is there. If that Williams kid is there, fuck yeah, awesome. Take the fastest wide receiver who other teams are going to not want to take a chance on because he's coming off of an ACL injury. Fuck it, that would be, that would be the ultimate value pick for the Chiefs. To get all those picks, get a solid defensive guy to help the defense, which is really where we got to go. You got the wide receiver core, like especially if you land an Odell or a DK. And then you go out and get him at 30, this another wide receiver, you know, burner, great hands, great route runner, you know, like kind of kind of along the lines of a Tyreek Hill situation. Eight two miles, take exit 13 for Firestone Boulevard. Yeah, yeah, she had him. Along the lines of a Tyreek Hill where other teams are going to pass on him because, you know, of a outside, you know, this in this case, kid's case with Williams, um, it's not that he was in trouble, it's just he got injured, right? But I mean, still, same situation's the same. Teams are going to pass on him. And we can scoop him up late in the first round. I can take that all fucking day because who knows what that kid will be. He might, you know, he's going to be, he might be a legitimate starter, game changer, superstar, and we have him on a rookie contract for four or five years, right? And and then the Tyree Kill thing, as much as he's a badass and, you know, potential future Hall of Famer um, that you hate to lose, but if we're talking championships and success, if we can get a kid who's going to be, you know, a game changer and a starter and change the field in a different way for the next four or five years cheaper, then let's fucking go. You know, let's go. That's the only, see, that's what the thing, yeah, and if you ask me, what would I rather have? No, I would have rather fucking still had Tyreek Hill and the Legion of Zoom intact. That's what I would have rather had. Because the chemistry, the connection, I mean, all of that has to be rebuilt with Mahomes now. I'm not, I'm not saying he can't do it, he very well can do it. He still has Kelsey there as a security blanket. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, uh, Nicole, you know, he just has to get used to Juju and then whatever other new wide couple of wide receivers he gets. Whether they get another one in free agency or just in the draft. In right? half a mile, take exit 13 uh, for Firestone Boulevard. So, I mean, but, but since that's not going to happen, the ultimate best case would be go get one of these free agents that are still top veterans to speed that, lock up that solid number one. Go get a defensive guy at 29. Take and then exit a, 13. And another wide receiver at 30. And then blow the rest on defense the rest of the draft. Let's let that happen. That's what I that's what I would love to see. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna go. Mile, use the right two lanes to turn right onto Firestone Boulevard. Shit up. I don't know if they're gonna blow their two late round picks to trade up and go get someone. I don't know. We will see. Um, definitely a day to day with with uh, use the right two lanes to turn right onto Firestone Boulevard. You know the crazy the news and it's been a crazy off season, all kinds of movement. Um, it's just been insane. It's definitely definitely the AFC West is I not still not wide open. Like I'm not one of these fucking people. Oh, you know, Chiefs. No, they're not. Do you think I fucking believe in broken down fucking car wreck? Are you kidding? I don't give a shit that they have um, Devontae Adams. They still got car wreck. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's a he's a great quarterback. For the other team. <laughs> you know, he's, he, on his number Boulevard one target. Mile. His favorite target. Just so happens to play for on every team he's played against. At <laughs> the corners. And then we got what? Okay, the Broncos. You got Russell Wilson. Congratulations. You got a solid quarterback. But you traded your future. You traded your one of your best starting linebackers. Uh, you lost a couple of other pieces. You don't really have solid weapons. Jerry Judy he still has a lot to prove. Um, you know, Court and Sutton, I'm not impressed by. He didn't do much. No, I mean, what can Russell Wilson do? I mean, Russell Wilson had Tyler Lockett and DK, and they still couldn't win. So, you know, their, their line is not great, and that was his problem in Seattle. That offensive line sucked in Seattle, and it still sucks in Denver. So he's going to be in the same situation. And, and coaching. 
you know, how good is that coach? I don't trust the coach. Um, and then, you know, so the Chargers are the only other cop, the actual competition. Feet, turn they right proved, onto Atlantic Avenue. You know, they proved that, that they are, you know, legit competition, but they're still going to do what Chargers do. They're going to, they're going to fail down the stretch. Justin Herbert proved he couldn't get it done, you know, at, at least last year, you know, is it going to be another Josh Allen? It's going to take him a couple of seasons. I don't know. So, you know, you got to still knock off the fucking Chiefs off that mob before you can say that. Because they've done it six years in a row, getting ready to be set. Take the next right so, onto Atlantic Avenue. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, they just got to win differently. This doesn't, like, automatic, especially... Oh, oh he's going that way. Yeah, he's going that way. Um, you know, especially with, uh, you know, depending on what they do with Rage in the draft. It's a lot, a lot in a quarter of, mile, turn left onto Ardine Street. A lot of preseason left, basically is what I'm saying, guys. So, Chiefs are still the best in the West. Uh, still one of the top contender, one, you know, top three contender in the AFC overall. I mean, obviously, we got the Bills and the bitch ass Bengals that we got to contend with. Um, and let's see what happens with the defense. That's the everybody's still doubting. You know, uh, that's going to be big. If 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 the Chiefs change the defense and we go from we move like five ranks up on a defense of where we were at, if we were top fifteen or whatever. Top. I don't think we were that high. I think I, I think we fell out of the teens. You know, uh, if we go top ten defense, people are in trouble because we still have a, a freaking dynamic offense. So. Uh, so that's it, guys. That's that's uh, about what I got to say about this entire crazy shit. I'll try to get back on the horse, get you guys a legit video and back in studio and all that stuff. And we'll see how it goes. Until then, go Chiefs. Later. <laughs>